This time I want to share a history bit with us. And um, the history bit that we're sharing today has to do with terminology centered around Satan and the devil. Mm. Um, what I'm going to do is read this information that has to do primarily with the terms we see in scripture that pertain to Hasatan and also the other term which we see in the scripture, the devil, and how they were understood. Before I read, I do want to say this. Oftentimes, when we hear the term the devil, Satan, we think of images in our minds of someone in a red suit, <laughs> pitchfork, horns, or we have images of this goat looking figure. There are many different images that we are accustomed to seeing when we hear the word Satan or the devil. And much of it is derived from the imagery that we have found in Satanism, in Wicca, and in other things that are related to pagan worship and their pictorial expressions. Mm -hmm. But when we really get down to the truth of the matter, what we find is that this personification, this individual that is called Hasatan in the Hebrew is called Ha-Satan, which literally means a the Satan. We find that it is not a person that has a red suit, horns, and a pitchfork. It's not someone that looks like some weird, scary monster. But in all actuality, it is one of the highest order of angelic beings that the Most High created, mm -hmm. that served the Creator. And he was the one who covered the presence of the Most High on his throne. However, he apostatized, he left his place he left his responsibility and turned against the Most High. And with that, I want to begin reading. The terminology designating an evil personage in the early writings of the Christian tradition is widely varied. But there are two dominant terms which pervade all the selected literature. The term Satan predominantly used in the so-called New Testament more than in any other early Christian writing and is a Hebrew name derived from the root Satan, which means to oppose or to act as an adversary. The term devil which comes from the Greek word diabolos used in the Septuagint, which is a Greek translation. And, and for those who are familiar with this term diabolos, being a Greek translation or Greek origin, the Latin as well use the same verbiage. Spanish. And that same verbiage is where you get it heard in the Latin languages, the Spanish, the Portuguese, and so 
those who are of a Latin background, when you hear diabolos, that's a term you're familiar with. But it originally comes from a Greek root. That's where it comes from. And so this word, diabolos, used in the Septuagint, was a term used to translate the Hebrew word Satan. So this is where we see its derivation. And it is a more frequently used term in the writings of the apostolic and the early Greek fathers. Both terms, Satan and devil, however, are to be found in the New Testament as well as in the latter writings. The New Testament writers, Mark and Paul, show a preference for the term satanas. Satanas is the Greek word for Satan. They put that S on the end. Sometimes in the Greek you'll see either the S, the E-S, or A-S on the end of a word because that's just simply a way in which they denote masculinity. So instead of saying Satan, they say Satanas, all right? Whereas Matthew more frequently uses the other designation, Diabolus. But all three authors use both terms. And whereas Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, and Origen most frequently speak of the devil, Diabolos, each writer provides us with his own version of the etymological derivation and meaning of the word Satan, Ho Satanas, which would actually be translated the Satan. In short, the two terms are treated as synonyms throughout the early tradition. The relation of these two words to the variety of other terms used to designate evil is a more complex problem. In noting some of the names and titles associated with Satan and the devil, in the literature being investigated, reference must be made to a number of background sources in the context of which the early Christian literature was written. Such background references will clarify the relation of these varied names for evil to the terms Satan and the devil. Let me pause. In other words, in the Bible, there are places where you will see the term evil used, where it will have what we will call a uh, designation for evil, like the evil. Mm -hmm. And in many instances in the scripture, when you see the word the evil or the evil one, it is synonymous to Satan or the devil. I just wanted to <clears throat> make mention of that. In the New Testament reference is occasionally made to the evil one. As when Jesus teaches his followers to pray, deliver us from the evil one. Now, in the translation of scripture, sometimes it says deliver us from evil. When you read it in the Greek, the Greek is apotuopodnero, which means the evil one. That's basically what it is. It gives personification to evil because it uses the, all right? It uses the definite article. The, anytime you use a definite article for something, it is specifically designating the term with some kind of personification. And so we see that when we look at this text, such as has been noted where Messiah says, deliver us from the evil one, literally, 
of or from the evil is dealing with the person. It is generally agreed upon that the allusion here is to Satan and to evil in the abstract. And this is also the case in a number of other references throughout the early tradition. The term poneros or evil means in the physical sense, sick, pain or painful, something spoiled or in poor condition. And in the ethical sense, something that is base, vicious, or degenerate. In uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 15, it refers to Belial in the text, where it's talking about that is there any agreement between righteousness and unrighteousness? And as that idea is being developed, it makes mention of the fact of agreement between Belial and the temple of Elohim. And is reminiscent of apocalyptic literature references. For example, the testaments of the 12 patriarchs, where in this particular book, the name Belial is called Belier and is used interchangeably with Satan or the devil. And so as we begin to understand a little bit about how the ancient writers of the first century and also how the prophets saw Hasatan, we note that over time, Hasatan became to be known a little bit more definely when our Messiah came on the scene. And the one who we call Hasatan, the devil, literally is the accuser. The word devil literally means the accuser, the one who accuses you. That's right. And Hasatan literally means the adversary, the one who opposes you, the enemy. So when we see these terms, it's important that we begin to develop a right understanding with reference to these terms and not begin to allow the imagery <laughs> that we are accustomed to to fill our minds because what happens is that we begin to have a misconstrued conception of who the enemy is. This is why in the scripture, one of the writers makes a statement and he says that the devil, Hasatan, comes as an angel of light because Hasatan is a powerful, powerful and beautiful angel. Did you hear me? He is a powerful and beautiful angel. And we need to understand that he is our enemy. He is the accuser. He is our adversary. And so I trust that this tidbit of information has help to give us a little bit better of an understanding of our enemy. And hopefully will guide us in helping us to see him rightly. The Almighty be praised.